Okay, uh, let me, so quantum mechanics is a bit trickier because we are splitting quantum mechanics into kind of two parts. There's part that we will be covering in this exam. And I guess the part that we are not covering in this exam, but exam three will be more comprehensive as far as quantum mechanics goes. So the part that we are covering in exam two is what I'm calling early quantum mechanics. So, uh, so let me just write out what you are expected to know. So it would be, um, yeah, I should really write down early quantum mechanics. Early. So in the lecture, you we went through the experiments which led to some of the quantum mechanical assumptions. You should know them because um, I might ask you about those on the multiple choice. And as a matter of pedagogical history for development of quantum mechanics, you should know them. But you probably don't want to be writing those down in your formula sheet. You don't have enough space for that. Um, so the, as a matter of just naming the names of experiments, what you should be familiar with are black body radiation, um, photoelectric effect, and the stable or model of a hydrogen atom. So those are the key things you should, you know, this should, what me mentioning it should remind you of something. But what I definitely wouldn't do is, for example, I wouldn't write down the Planck law formula here. Um, even though I, I don't have it memorized and you probably don't have it memorized, the thing is I'm not going to put anything on the exam that requires you to have those memorized. Or I wouldn't really write down Wien's displacement law either. I mean, you shouldn't know what it is. I guess you should know conceptually what that means, but you don't need to have the, the, the coefficient memorized. If you somehow need to know that for answering some question, I would give that to you. So in the early quantum mechanics, the things that you should, I mean, things that you hopefully have memorized, but in case you don't, as a reminder of how important these things are, what you would have written in your formula sheet are these quantum mechanical assumptions that energy of certain things, photons, biggest one, comes in a quantized quantity. And the quantized amount is given by Planck's constant times frequency. And um, the second important relationship is the de Broglie relationship. That anything that has momentum has a wave property associated with it that gives rise to wave interference phenomenon and all that. The momentum is given by Planck's constant divided by wavelength. So this is, um, this is, is the gateway that takes you from something that is a wave to its a particle property, or something that you traditionally thought of like a particle to its wave property. Uh, you can go either way. So these are the two most uh, important quantum mechanical assumptions. And everything else we've done up until the week before spring break kind of relies on this. Even when we introduced the Schrodinger equation, um, we were relying on these relationships to kind of guess at the correct wave equation. Oh, and I guess um, while I'm writing this down, I should write down the second form of this that use h bar. So e, HF, that's the same thing as H bar omega. H over lambda, that's the same thing as H bar K. Do people remember that? Especially if you don't, this is, um, formula sheet is a wonderful place to have a reminder for you that you know the basic relationships that hopefully you have memorized, but people do forget. Like H bar, all that means is H divided by two pi and the basic wave relationships, like omega is equal to two pi f, wave number is two pi over lambda, that sort of stuff, stuff that you knew, that you are supposed to know, but I may have forgotten. Um, let's see, there were other things we covered in early quantum mechanics. Um, wait, did they cover anything else? I guess as far as the basic relationships go, this is kind of it. So we, 
oh, the, uh, for the Bohr model, right? So what Kevin is talking about is the Bohr's assumption that angular momentum comes in the quantized quantity of NH bar. Or if you write it out like this, then NH over 2 pi. Um, sure, yeah, you should do. Remember, so one thing I can, once again, I haven't written the exam. I don't know exactly what I'm going to put on the exam. One thing I can imagine you doing, um, so this is what I would recommend you. You should be familiar retracing what's called uh, semi-classical analysis. And the biggest example you have is the Bohr model. Because for much of the Bohr model, you are using, you are doing classical analysis. It's a circular motion of two bodies that are attracted to each other through electrical interaction. And it's a semi-classical instead of classical, because at some point along that step, you introduce this assumption. So, uh, that's uh, something, so without promising you that I will put Bohr model on the exam because I might decide not to. Um, if you were to review something in quantum mechanics, this is something that puts, uh, brings together a lot of pieces that you are supposed to know for quantum mechanics. So, um, so um, you should know how to do this. And a good, um, so it, it, it sort of comes in two pieces. The big part that I think a lot of people may need a review that I don't emphasize enough is the classical portion. Because um, it sort of comes down to how well did you do in physics 4A? How well did you do with the circular motion stuff and you know things that involve centripetal acceleration? Especially if you didn't, then you should review how um, those ideas are used in Bohr model. And, um, while not forgetting the new things that are being introduced in this semester. Um, so, so these are the, some of the biggest pieces. And with those out of the way, you should know kind of more, um, more fringe stuff. So there are special formulas that are, um, so I guess uh, let me, just to be comprehensive, I don't want to feel like you are misled if I um, decide to do something else. So if you look at the past exam I posted, you will see that the quantum mechanics question that's there is the infinite square well. So that's another example of semi-classical analysis. So this infinite square well, um, so let me call it square well. So that's another example of semi-classical analysis because for much of analyzing, let's say, energy of the particle in this box, you are using your classical intuition, the kinetic energy. But it's a semi-classical because at some point you bring in the fact that it behaves like a wave. So there are only some allowed wavelengths that fit into this well. So those become the allowed energy levels. So uh, I think these are the two big, two big um, examples of semi-classical analysis. And we didn't really do anything else. So whatever I pick, it should be within those two. So just a question. That's also no. Yeah, particle in a box, yeah. So I should have square well, or your textbook calls it, it always comes with a quotation mark. Particle in a box. And um, so for exam two, study infinite square well, but not the finite square well. We haven't gotten to that. That's a part of chapter seven that we haven't gotten to. Uh, we will come back to that after exam two, because that's where uh, it's more of wave mechanics. But speaking of wave mechanics, there are some things from wave mechanics that at least you shouldn't be surprised with. The Schrodinger equation, we did cover it. So if you see something that looks like this, which is the Schrodinger equation you have seen, the time-dependent Schrodinger equation that you have seen, you know, then at least uh, at a minimum, you shouldn't panic. You should feel like, oh, you have seen this somewhere before. As in, it's a differential equation, and that this, this describes the matter waves that we are going to deal with. 
that portion is not that surprising. <laughs> and you have some idea, some sense that this term is representing the kinetic energy, this term is representing the potential energy, and this is representing the total energy. Just at some basic conceptual level. And with the exam two, the most I would ask you to do anything with the Schrodinger equation is you know, give you a solution, tell you the equation. Um, so I guess if you don't want to write this down in your formulas, that's fine. Tell you the equation and tell you, well, verify that this is a solution, or what I'm telling you is the solution, is a solution of this differential equation. And you guys remember how to do that, right? Your exam had something like that. You just plug it in. Yeah. It's very simple, <laughs> but a lot of people who don't have experience dealing with the di differential equations or partial differential equations, it's so easy to get intimidated when there's no reason for you to be, because all you have to do is take the derivatives <laughs> and just do some simple algebra. So that's uh, the level of wave mechanics you would see on your exam two. Um, the more sophisticated things, we are reserving it for your exam three. Uh, we'll come back to all of that later. Um, and I, um, I don't know if I should write down the, some special case formulas. Um, so it, I guess for the Bohr model and particle in a box, there are some special case formulas that, um, you know, like Bohr quantized the radius, velocity, energies. Um, those things are good special case formulas to have in the formula sheet. Um, for, if for nothing else, to double check that any answers you drive are correct. Um, oh, I almost forgot. So this is actually something that's kind of missing in the posted sample exam. And I want to highlight this and make sure that no one misses it. This is sort of why I covered the topics in the order we did this semester. So the thing that I want to make sure that everyone remembers to have reviewed, have in your formula sheet, know how to use it, is Compton scattering. So Compton scattering is one case where you really need to have the formula that's derived in the textbook. If you're trying to drive it in the exam, it's going to be, it's going to take you too long uh, because it's a, it's a collision analysis that takes into account the special relativity. So the formula that's derived in your book is wavelength of the scattered photon minus the wavelength of the instant photon is equal to the what's called the Compton wavelength of the particle, H over MC. And um, in lecture, we did a special case where it's a straight back. But in your homework, you've seen the, um, you've had the questions where you had to use the more general formula, where it's one minus cosine. This theta is the angle between the incident photon, angle between the incident photon and the outgoing photon. So you should have this Compton scattering formula in your formula sheet somewhere because I really don't expect you to derive this on the exam. And you should know it's a physical meaning so that you know how to, to answer questions that are based on this. Yeah, yeah um, and um, yeah, I, well, once again, I haven't written the questions, but I have uh, some idea of how I might be able to use this in some different places. <laughs> but you should know how to apply them. Okay. So this is a brief-ish um, topics review of what you are supposed to know. 